Well, I mean, we're going to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. But we need to finish. We need to finish what we've started so we can move on, go to another place. But if you've been joining me for the last few Wednesday nights when I've had the opportunity to minister, uh, the Lord instructed me to teach you on the subject of right and wrong thinking. And I thought I was going to be able to do that in one lesson. I should have known better. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, this is now part three. And prayerfully, this will be the finale so that we can move on from the place of right and wrong thinking to the place of right and wrong believing. And then from there, when we complete that, we're going to move into the place of right and wrong confession, right and wrong speaking. And what we're learning, and I think the reason why the Lord has us on this subject is because he wants to get our, our thinking straightened out. And he wants us to realize that if we're going to speak right, then it all begins with thinking right. Because our believing and our speaking is connected and is hinged to, first of all, our thinking. Are we thinking God's thoughts tonight? Are we believing God's thoughts? The world may say to you, there's not enough. But God says, I'm more than enough. Hallelujah. That's God's thought. God says that he's mindful of you. And I'd like you to turn to, real quick, Psalm 115. Tonight, the Lord is mindful of us. And this is one of his thoughts for us tonight. Psalm 115. We'll start with verse 12. Now, the actual heading, excuse me. The actual heading of my, this particular psalm in my study Bible says, now listen to this, because we just sang about the glory of God. To God alone belongs glory. So I'm just going to read a couple of verses in the beginning, and then we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for your mercy and for your truth's sake. Wherefore, oh, listen to this now. This is what the heathens say. Wherefore should the heathens say, where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them now listen to this, are like unto them, so is everyone that trusts in them. Let's pick up on verse 12. Well, you know what? Let's just continue to thought. Let's go with 9, 10, and 11. Now this was the psalmist as he spoke to Israel. And, he speak, and, the, and the psalmist speaks to us. The word of God speaks to us now. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And here we are. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And I said all that to get to this, because this is God's thought, one of his thoughts for us tonight. 
The Lord hath been mindful of us. Some people might say, I, I, I don't think the Lord's been thinking about me. Oh, but the Lord says, oh, yes, I have. The Lord hath been mindful of us. And here's what he said. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Folks, the Lord's going to take care of Israel. The Lord is going to take care of the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Do you believe that tonight? Then let's say it together, and we'll personalize it. Say, the Lord shall increase us more and more, us and our children. Now listen to this. You are blessed of the Lord, which hath made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. He gave us the earth, church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But look at this last closing statement. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Deb, come on up here again. Praise the Lord. Have you got a song that can bless the Lord right now that we can sing along with you? Well, no, I don't want to take the time to do that, so I'm going to offer one to you. Oh, okay. Okay, acapella. Acapella. Acapella, okay. Okay. A bless the Lord song. Have you got one? Sure. All right. Acapella, and we're going to sing with you. Because what we're going to do is we're going to act on this word, but we will what? Bless the Lord from this time forth. And how long? Forevermore. Lead us in a, sure. a, a bless the Lord song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And bless the Lord. Say you have done great things for you have done great things bless your holy name one more time bless the lord and bless the lord oh my soul Here's what we're going to do before Deb goes. We're going to sing it one more time because what we're doing is we're blessing him. And when you bless him, guess what? He, he loves it. He, he's pleased. And as Debbie just said, he inhabits the praises of his people. You see, what he wants us to do is bless him. 
and bless him all the time. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I'll sing it again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all. be seated everybody you may be seated so what is it what is one of the things that the Lord wants us to do bless him you think when you bless him that your mind will change you better believe it will all the thoughts that aren't supposed to be in your mind will leave they will disappear they won't be spoken because you'll be blessing the Lord in fact, God tells us a whole lot about the mind. And as we started this teaching, that was, that's part of this teaching, that if we're, going to, if we're going to believe correctly, if we're going to speak correctly and laugh, then we have to think correctly. So what do we do with those imaginations that come to us that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God? The Bible says to do what? Cast them down. Give them no place. Amen, church? And so tonight, the Lord wants to just say this to us before we move on, because this is one of his thoughts, that he is mindful of you. I'm going to personalize it right now. You are on his mind. And he will bless you. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless you, I'm going to personalize it right now, and all of them that fear the Lord. So my next question would be to, you, to us, do we fear the Lord? Yes. Say, I fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. He said he will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Parents, one of the best things that you can do is to teach your children to bless the Lord at home. Tell your little ones, teach them how to bless the Lord so that they will grow up blessing the Lord. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. And then here's the scripture that he wanted to get across to us more than any other tonight, I believe, at the moment. The Lord shall increase you. Say, say he shall. Say the Lord shall increase me. More and more, me and my children. Hallelujah. This is God's thought. This is one of his thoughts. The Lord shall increase you, increase you, increase you. Say thank you, Lord, for increasing me. Me and our, my children. Now you may say tonight, well, I don't have any children. Well, you may have some spiritual children, children you've given birth to spiritually. But he's also talking to us corporately here together as well as individually. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. He says, you are blessed of the Lord. Say, I am blessed of the Lord which hath made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to us 
the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But here's what he says. But he finishes everything. He finishes his whole psalm off with the concluding point, if I could say it that way. This is the end of the story, you might say. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth. Church, I just want to encourage you to start blessing him. Start blessing him from this time forth. And forevermore, praise the Lord. And everybody said, amen. Right and wrong thinking, is it important? It absolutely is. Let's take a minute, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for what you're about to say to us along these lines. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us into all truth, teaching us all things, bringing to our remembrance everything the Lord has spoken to us about and for showing us things to come. Thank you, Lord, for increasing us in right thinking. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Church, what you and I believe tonight is a result of our thinking. If we think wrong, it's because, well, let me say that. If we think wrong, here's what's going to happen. We're going to end up believing wrong. And if our believing is wrong, this is what happens. Our confession will be wrong. In other words, what we say will be wrong. And our believing and our confession tonight, it all hinges on our thinking. And that is the reason why Father God has given us the Bible to straighten out our thinking, to show us what we should think. His thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. His thoughts are higher than the thoughts of the unrighteous man. And so God wants you and I to think his thoughts. With that in mind, I want you to turn to, and let's just see here. Let me do this real fast. We'll start with this one. Psalm 92, verse 5. Psalm 92, verse 5 says this, and for the sake of time, I'm going to have to speed this up. O oh Lord, how great are your works, and your thoughts are very deep. Folks, you're going to have to dig deep for his thoughts. Did you know that? You've got to dig deep into the word of God and find out what God's thinking Let's go to Psalm 9411 real fast. Listen to what he says about the thoughts of man. Verse 94. Verse 11. The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Let me just pick up from the Amplified without actually reading one through seven. How even though God's thoughts are also progressive, that one thought leads to the next, one sentence in the Bible leads to the next, so you have a complete understanding of what he's talking about. And the heading that I have on this particular psalm, Psalm 94, says, An appeal for God to avenge. So I'll pick up in verse 8, and then in in your own spare time, you can do a little more research if you like. But I'm going to read right from the Bible, uh, from the Amplified, to bring us into thought number, I mean to verse number 11 again. Here's what he said. He said, Consider and understand, you stupid ones among the people. And you self-confident fools, when will you become wise? 
He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, shall he not see? Listen to this one now. He who disciplines and instructs the nations, shall he not punish? He who teaches man knowledge. The Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are empty, or I'm sorry, that they are vain, empty, and futile, only a breath. Now, my Bible shows me, and I, haven't, I actually haven't researched this. I mean, this is happening right now as I'm up here at the pulpit. But my Bible says to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 20. So I'm going to turn there just to run a, a little reference, just to see what it says. Aren't you glad God's thoughts are higher than man's natural thoughts? Do you think the Lord knows what he's talking about? You better believe he does. And he wants us to understand that if we're going to think right, then we're going to have to have the right source for our thinking, and that source is his word. The more time you and I spend in the Bible, the more our minds will be renewed to his, his thinking, to his thoughts. The Bible also teaches us that now as, new, as believers in Christ Jesus, as new creatures in Christ, you and I have the mind of Christ. We have his mind. And all we need to do is just start listening. Listen to his mind. Because you have it. And he wants to increase you far beyond. And increase me. And increase this church far beyond where we are. Far beyond where we are today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 20. Let's just look at that real quick before we move on. And just see what it says here. Mm, listen to this. Well, I'll just begin with verse. We'll begin with verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. From the King James. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God. For it is written... He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, listen to this now. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, speaking of the, the wisdom of this world, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours, Wow, everything's ours, church. And you are Christ. How many of you are Christ? You're, you belong to Christ. And Christ is God. Isn't that good news? Amen. All right, well, let me go here. We're just talking a little bit right now about some thoughts, the thoughts of God. And this is one that I want to finish with right now, and I have others that we could look at. But I want you to see this in Psalm chapter 40, verse 5. Psalm chapter 40, verse 5. This is the psalmist, and this is the heading that is over my Bible. Now, this may have been added by the translators. Obviously, it, wa it was. But this is a psalm of David. But, but the essence of this psalm is to delight in the will of the Lord. And that's what the, that's what the translators have written over this Bible, over, in, over uh, this particular psalm. This psalm was written to delight in the will of the Lord. And in Psalm chapter 40, verse 5, we read these words. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And here's the part I want to emphasize. And thy thoughts which are to usward. God is actually sharing his thoughts to us. God is sharing his thoughts to you tonight, church. Do you need his wisdom? Just listen. He's giving you wisdom tonight. Do you need direction tonight in your life? Just listen to your heart. He's giving you direction. Do you need finances in your life? Listen to your heart. Listen to the word of God. Listen to what the word of God is telling you to do. Listen to what the Lord is actually doing in our life. He said that he's actually increasing us more and more. 
honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your what? Increase. Here's right thinking, church. You and I, maybe you don't feel like it tonight. Maybe it doesn't look like it tonight, but you are actually increasing. Because the Lord is increasing you, even though you may not see it yet with your natural eye. It is happening. It is happening. It is happening as we are obedient to his word, honor the Lord with our substance, honor the Lord with your with, with, your, with your income, with your money. But I also like to say it this way, honor the Lord with your faith because now faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for. So honor the Lord with your faith and with the first fruits of all your increase. God says he's increasing his people who obey him. Hallelujah, who honor him. Let us be that person. Let us be that Christian that keeps his word. Because when you honor his word and you obey his word, he has nothing but increase, increase, increase for everybody in this room and all believers everywhere throughout the earth. But here, let's finish this. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. Many. He has many thoughts that he's thinking toward us right now. The Lord is mindful of us. He is mindful of you tonight. You may have thought he forgot you. You may have thought, oh, he has. I don't think the Lord's been thinking about me. Oh, no, he's been thinking about you. And he's trying to get your thinking and my thinking straightened out. Glory to God. Amen. Many, O Lord, many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. Listen to this. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Glory to God. So God has a lot of thoughts for us, church, and he wants us to think his thoughts. Say, God wants me to think his thoughts. When I think his thoughts... I will, believe, I will be believing his thoughts. And when I'm believing his thoughts, I will speak his thoughts and his thoughts for us, for me, for my family will come to pass. Amen? Amen. But right believing, right speaking, right confession, it all hinges on our thinking. So God said, I'm giving you my word to get your thinking right. Now, with that in mind, let me just say a couple things and I'm gonna move on just a little bit more and I don't even know if I'll finish, but we might be officially done anyway so that we can move on. Because you know what the good news is? We're family. Yeah. I can come back and do this again. Right. <laughs> we can have this series all over again. Even if I don't get to every detail tonight, even though my heart wants to. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you're getting what God wants us to get. We're getting what he wants us to get. And what he wants us to get. Boy, if, if I could just sum up what I'm trying to say and what I've been trying to say the last three, three sessions is this. Right thinking produces right believing. And right believing produces right confession. And when you confess the right thing then you will see the right thing when God made heaven and earth he said let there be light and there was light and the next thing the next verse says and God saw the light what father God wants you and I to know is it's very important what we say in this life in fact whether you realize it or not we're all seeing what we've been saying good or bad it's better to say good than it is bad, church. Amen. That is the principle and law of confession. Mark eleven twenty three says this. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Here's what Jesus said. He shall have whatsoever he saith church tonight we are possessing what we're confessing 
Do you want to confess something different? Do you want to possess something different? Then we have to also change our thinking. We have to think more in line with him. We have to increase our thinking. We have to increase our thinking about spirit, uh, about uh, our spiritual life, about our mental and emotional and physical life, about our financial life, about our, our family life, about our, uh, our relational life with, with others. What was Jesus' answer uh, for our enemies? What was his answer? Love your enemies. Anybody here have any enemies? We all have enemies. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, you want to have victory? Love them. Love them. Pray for them. Do good to them. Should we go there? (laughs) Praise the Lord. That's, That's another direction altogether. But God wants you and I to think in line with his word. Believe what the Bible says. Why? Because our confession is what creates the reality of the promise. Our confession is what actually created the reality of our salvation. Let's turn real fast to Romans chapter, Romans chapter 10, just to, to kind of you know, remind ourselves again how important confession is in our life. And that if we're going to confess the right thing if we're going to possess the right thing if we're going to have the right thing in our life then we have to start first by thinking the right thing so that we can believe the right thing and I think and I know that this is the word of God does anybody here want to hear from God tonight then get into your Bible does anybody want to hear from God tomorrow then get into your Bible. Do you want to hear from God for the rest of your life? Then stay in your Bible. Because, listen to this, so many people want to hear from God. And I'm going to share with you how you hear from God. Y'all want to know how to hear from God? It's all contained in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing. Now listen to this. And hearing by the word of of God faith comes by hearing but have you ever thought of it like this and hearing comes by the word of God you and I have to be in the word and when you're in the word you will hear from God In Romans chapter 10, we read these words, verse 8. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be, what? Saved. Now listen to this. For with the heart, not with your head, not with your mind, not with your intellect, not with your intelligence, For with the heart, man believes to righteousness. We actually believe to righteousness with our inner man, with our spirit, with our spirit man. This has nothing to do with our flesh or with our our natural organs, so to speak. It has nothing to do with your brain. But it has everything to do with God. For with the heart, God said. He didn't say with the mind. He said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness with the spirit and with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. If I don't, if I don't confess Jesus as my Lord, he's not my Lord. I'm not saved. I'm not saved until I confess Jesus. How many of you are so thankful that you can have confessed Jesus? And that's not a negative confession. That's a positive confession. (laughs) 
So when you and I think in line with the Bible, when we believe in line with the Bible, when we confess in line with the Bible, it creates the reality of what we are believing for. And when we come, to, and when we came to Jesus, and I'll say it this way, when we came to Jesus as sinners, we believed on him and received him into our heart. And we said, in some form or fashion, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe on you. I receive you. I believe that you are Lord, however it may be said. Because the Bible says that whosoever shall what? Call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you have to do two things. You have to know that he is Lord, confess that he is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And why would you call on somebody who's dead? No, we call on somebody who is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. And because he's alive, that's why we could call on him. Glory to God. So that's thinking in line with the Bible. And it makes a great deal of difference as to how the sinner is brought into salvation. Let me share this, because this is where I was going to take you tonight. This is where we were going to go. If a, if a sinner's thinking is straightened out to begin with and his believing and his confession is made right, then it will be much easier for that sinner who has now become a Christian, it will become much easier for him to not waver in his Christian walk. Let me say that again. I don't wanna, I wanna keep it simple. If a sinner's thinking is straightened out to begin with and his believing and his confession is, is, are made right, then it will be much easier for him to not waver in his Christian walk. On the other hand, if he is not given sufficient instruction, then the devil will take advantage of what he doesn't know. He will be defeated and robbed of that which God has already done for him because if that individual doesn't know the word of God and doesn't know how to hold fast to his confession of his faith, uh, of faith, here's what the devil will do. The devil will camouflage the situation and make that person feel as if he is not even saved. And when the new convert begins to make mistakes, how many of you remember when you were a new convert? I I won't go any further than that. <laughs> and when the new convert makes, listen to this, little mistakes, the devil will try to tell him, well, you're really done for now, so you might as well give up and quit. How could you even be saved and act like that? The devil's a liar. But the same is true when it comes to healing. And this is what we have to get. Remember this, church, that confession is Satan's defeat. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or saying the same thing. What does that mean? That means that you and I tonight have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, and he is there representing us to the Father. And Jesus is saying, I died for them. I took their sins. I redeemed them. I became sin for their sin, that they might become the righteousness of God in me. I took their infirmities and bore their sicknesses. Let me say that again. I took their infirmities and bore their sicknesses. I delivered them from the authority of darkness. I created them anew, making them new creatures. This is what Jesus is saying in his word. And the Greek translation of this verse, of, of um, Hebrews 4.14, the Greek translation of this verse says, now listen, let us, not Jesus, let us hold fast to saying the same thing. So that is to be our confession, church. Our confession either imprisons us or sets us free, depending upon what we've been believing and thinking. Our confession is the result of our believing 
and our believing is the result of our thinking right or wrong. That's why, church, it's so important for you and I to renew our minds every day with the word of God, to fill our heart and to fill our minds with the thoughts of God. I'm going to stop here for tonight. If you want more instruction on this, I'll be teaching more along these lines in the future. The next time we come together, well, I better not put it out there. I'll just have to wait and see how the Lord leads me. Because just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and stop tonight, but there's more. But here's the essence of what God is saying to us. And I'm going to go to the end of my notes, and I'm going to give you this, some concluding remarks. And if we pick up again from here, then we will. But here's what we need to know. Here's what I want to say to you. Sometimes Christians are needing help from God. In fact, we're always needing his help in every area of our life, if we could say it that way. And here's what God says in Isaiah 41.10. And let's turn there as I close. Tonight, you may be needing help. Tonight, you may be needing strength. Tonight, maybe there's been some discouragement in your life. Maybe even fear has tried to come against you. But listen to what Isaiah 41.10 says as we think God's thoughts tonight. He says, and I'll read it from the Amplified, fear not, there is nothing to fear. Why? For I am with you. Here's what else he says. Do, no, do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. Why? For I am your God. Now listen to this. Our God tells us tonight, I will strengthen, now get ready for this one. This is maybe a new thought to you. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. He didn't say he was gonna harden your heart. He said I'm gonna harden you to what? Difficulties. We face difficulties in this life. And he said, don't be dismayed, fear not. I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties. And here's the rest of the story. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Yes. Isaiah 41.10, church. These words were written to Israel and they were for Israel, and they're for us today as well. So even in the darkest hour, no matter what you may be facing, you and I can go around smiling. Why? Because God said, fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Say it with me. Say, he will strengthen me. Say, I will, I will not fear what man shall do to me because the Lord is my helper. Say, I will not be dismayed because the Lord is my God. He will strengthen me. 
He will help me. He will uphold me with the right hand of my righteous, uh, right hand of his righteousness. But even in the darkest hour, because of that, because of that word, and because we're thinking in line with his word, you and I can go around smiling. Church, it's good to have friends who stand with us in faith, and I close with these remarks. It's good to have friends who stand with us in faith through our trials but here's what we have to grasp hold of but the Lord is always with us when your friends aren't there when your family isn't there Jesus is and as a born again believer he's not only with you he is in you and as a baptized believer he's not only with you he's not only in you but his spirit is I'm talking about baptized with the Holy Ghost. So even in the darkest hour, you and I can go around smiling. Why? Because the Lord is always with us. Always with us. And in us. And he is our help. Let's tell them that. Say, Lord, Lord. you are my help. There are people in this room who need help tonight from God. Say it with me. Say, Lord, Lord you are my help. Are my help. And, I and I will not fear what man, what man shall do unto me. On the other hand, there are some people, even Christians, of course, who are down and out crying to God, God, help us. Now here's what we have to understand, church, because we're thinking a brand new thought tonight. Listen to this. This is going to help us. This is going to take us to a place maybe we've never been before in our thinking. And this is where we have to go as we move forward and higher in faith. God does help us when we cry out to him. I've cried out to him. But you know what he had to do when I did that? He came down to my level instead of me going up to his level. That's a big thought. And he will always come down to our level because he came to our level and saved us and healed us and delivered us. He sent his son Jesus. But here's what we have to get as we move higher. So when we do cry out to God, he does help us. And here's why. Because our God is a merciful God. And he comes down to our level. But here's the big thought for tonight, church. This is, this is, this is right thinking as we go, as we move in the light of who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ and what we can do in Christ. Tonight, you and I are in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might. You're far above the devil. You're far above demons. Amen. You're far above this world. But here's what happens. Because of wrong thinking, people live under a gloomy cloud because they're operating down here when God wants us to operate up here. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me try to bring this to a capsule. So even in the darkest hour, you and I can go around smiling if we believe, if we're thinking in line with his word. He said, count it all joy in the midst of tests and trials. How many Christians really do that? When they're in a test and trial, instead of counting it joy, they start what? Oh, God. Oh. What am I going to, oh, you know, I, I could, I could, I'm getting a little dr dramatical there, but, uh, but then maybe I'm not getting so dramatical because I think we may have all done that at one time or another, but that's why we're growing. We're moving from babyhood to adulthood, and this is the way adult Christians think.
if we do cry out to him and we're begging him for his help, we really don't have to do that because he said, he is my helper. All I have to do is believe him. If I truly believed his word, then there's a lot of things I might not be saying and doing. But in order to believe it, I have to know it. And the only way we're going to know it is if we renew our mind to the truth. Amen? So let me, let me, let me finish this. So church, if we find ourselves begging, pleading, and crying out to God for help, guess what? He will come to our rescue. Why? Because he loves you. Because he's merciful. Because he's good. Because he's kind. But he also wants us to grow up and come to a new level in him. Come to his level because it's much better to come up to his level for our blessings. When he has to come down to our level, and this is what I was trying to get to, so here it comes. When he has to come down to our level, here's what happens. We stay under a gloomy cloud of thinking. So, and we feed that gloomy cloud of thinking by wrong thinking, by wrong confession, by wrong believing. But here's what we can do, church. We can feed ourselves the right thinking, the right confession, and the right believing by the word of God. And here's what happens. When you and I begin to think his thoughts, believe his thoughts, confess his thoughts, it lifts us up. Glory to God. If God be for us, church, who can be against us? So why do we sometimes act like everybody's against us? Because we're not thinking the way we're supposed to be thinking. If God be for us, who can be against us? So what are we doing right now? We're renewing our mind. We're renewing our mind. Say it with me. If God be for us, who can be against us? This should be our confession. Why? Because God is truly for us. He is not against us, and he is always with us. And I close now for sure. We should all become God-minded, and the only way we become this way is to think God's thoughts after him. Think on what God says in his word and confess that it is true and you shall surely see it come to pass for you. Amen, amen. amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this teaching. Holy Spirit, thank you for, for ministering to us. And there's so much more that can be said and needs to be said, but you're the great teacher. And we thank you for teaching those that are in attendance tonight, those that are viewing by internet, those who will come to words of life and are coming to words of life. Thank you for teaching us, even in our private time, what it means to think right. Teach us, Father, about right and wrong thinking. Teach us, Father, what we need to know about right and wrong believing. And teach us, Father, what we need to know about right and wrong speaking so that we may possess all the right things that you have for us in these last days as we go forward in your name to glorify you and win this world and as much of this world as we can to Jesus Christ. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen.